it was Secretary Simato's idea to have me speak before the tour of the building. So, just in case you're finding why the program was changed, it was the General's orders. I'm happy, whenever I see Secretary Simato, I'm happy because I see a kindred soul. Because I am certain with Secretary Simato at the helm of the DNR, he will not let our biodiversity go to waste. That's why we are committed to a 1.5 degrees Celsius, because even with a 1.5 degrees Celsius rise in temperature, our biodiversity, including marine biodiversity, will almost be extinct, dying or dead, 90%, and that's only marine biodiversity. But I'm deviating from my speech. I'm happy to be here because I believe it was in 2009, when I sponsored the concurrence in the ratification of the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, which I understand from former ambassador and SFA Delia Albert, it was during her time when she fought for it that the Philippines hosts it and the headquarter being in the Philippines. So I'm glad that Delia's here. Then I sponsored it in 2009 and I became your chairman of finance. And therefore, I remember allocating capital outlay of 25 or so million for this structure. And so I'm glad to see it up now. And I hope that we will continue to work together for programs and activities with the ASEAN Center of Biodiversity, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, and the Philippine Senate. I'd like to greet Attorney Roberto Olivo of the ACB, Deputy Secretary General his Excellency Vontep Artakai Valvati. I was uh, already apologizing ahead that I may not be able to say his full name uh, appropriately, but he said it's perfect. Thank you for that. And Ambassador Beth Bentoseso, our permanent representative to ASEAN, whom I uh, met in Laos many, many years ago. Another lovely ASEAN country, which I love going to, especially the UNESCO heritage town of Luang Prabang. Uh, ASEC Helen de la Vega, also here, head of our ASEAN uh, activities in the DFA. It was in Myanmar when I saw ASEC or uh, Ambassador de la Vega then. And at the time, Suchi, Do Su, was still, was just released from house arrest. And it was actually a private secret meeting I had at her home. And would you know that the present president was our was my guide, special aid to Suchi, was my guide who brought me to Suchi's home. And when we were having a goodbye dinner in the home of Ambassador de la Vega, a man was knocking in her gate to deliver a private letter, confidential letter, from Do Su to President Noy Noy, who had just assumed office then, or was about to assume office. Was that 2010? Yes. And uh, when we found out it was, what was it? Uh, the special aid then and we let him in and he said you know the military has been following us but there's this letter we want to be sent to president aquino we cannot mail it we cannot email it etc there was no internet yet then at least not allowed and so i became the messenger from the then special aid now president of myanmar to then president aquino in the home of ambassador asek de la vega that's just how life is and i remember just recently when I had a bilateral meeting with uh, now foreign minister and the de facto uh, head of, of Myanmar, uh, Do Su, and she remembers that time when we met and had a good one hour tea in her home and when we delivered that personal letter to President Aquino. Mon Pae is here. I think uh, former Secretary Pae still has that very important position, right? Mon. You will never go cold, right? Okay, you commit to me. You will never go cold. Okay. Tatatawa si Mon. Yes, we are here. And I have to tell you really because it will be a stranded economic cost if anyone decides to invest in coal. Because renewable energy, namely solar, hydro, biomass, uh, wind, with battery, is now being done in Europe, in the US, in even in India and in China. And was it 
Prime Minister Modi of India who closed 1,000 coal plants in India, am I accurate in saying that? And China is doing the same way and therefore it does not make good economic sense to be investing in coal. The way to go to protect biodiversity is to push to invest and to uh, utilize renewable energy whichever is attuned to the place. So I hope that one day UP Los Banos and Erie will be 100% RE and that's possible as long you can have a solar microgrid in UPLB even in this complex of the ASEAN center. I don't know if you're under Meralco which is quite expensive. I don't know if you're directly attached to the grid but perhaps you can have an embedded generation a solar microgrid in a sand center that would really give a political statement. So I'd like to uh, greet the others. Ambassador uh, Joe Hariya Wahab is also here, uh, Brunei is the ambassador here. Um, chairperson of the governing board, uh, Mr. Longkam Atsa Navong is also here. And um, Ambassador Tuat Panha of Cambodia is here. Ambassador Abdul Rashid of Malaysia. Ambassador Win Nang of Myanmar. Is our Myanmar ambassador present here today? Or maybe they had left already? Yes. Is Ambassador Li Pang here? No, she's a good friend. And um, we have our many friends from uh, this Ambassador Li Kwok Tuan of Vietnam, uh, Minister Som Jai Tap. Hao Pong and um, our Serge of the European Union uh, representing Ambassador Yesen. Yes, um, Mr. Matthias Lentz is present here and of course I mentioned Delia Albert and all of you present here. I congratulate the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity for the launch of your new headquarters in time for the 50th anniversary of the establishment of ASEAN this year. I wish to express my support to the mission of ACB to champion biodiversity conservation in the region. ASEAN is one of the most diverse regions in the world, hosting more than 600 million people who speak more than 900 different languages and dialects. While it only occupies only 3% of the Earth's surface, it is home to 18% of all species assessed by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, or the IUCN. It is home to the mega-diverse countries of the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, all of three which are also part of the Coral Triangle. Amid this abundance, great challenges face us in the task of protecting and preserving a region's rich biodiversity. The increasing loss of biodiversity, particularly in Asia, is being attributed to habitat loss, over-exploitation, pollution, invasive alien species, and climate change. The establishment of the AEC, or the ASEAN Economic Community, since it promotes economic, political, social, and cultural cooperation across the region, is seen as a way for the region to gain greater influence in the global economic and political stage. But I wish to remind everyone of a very important goal we must all aim for as we seek to work towards economic integration, and that is resilience, disaster risk reduction, and sustainable development. The ASEAN community is geographically located in one of the most disaster-prone regions in the world. And according to the United Nations, people in the Asia-Pacific region are four times more likely to be affected by disasters caused by natural hazards than those in Africa and 25 times more likely than those in Europe and in North America. Moreover, climate change has already made its presence felt in our region and we know that. Extreme weather events, stronger and more intense typhoons, heavier rains, severe floods, devastating droughts have become recurring events, a common concern for countries in our region. The IPCC, as you know, said that poverty alleviation and achieving food security will become increasingly difficult. New poverty traps will arise as existing obstacles remain and economic growth will slow down because of climate change. 
Faced with all these difficulties, it is a must that development policy should promote effective risk reduction towards sustainable and resilient growth. We must make our countries resilient by increasing investments in DRR, by conducting and sharing risk assessments, which DNR already does, establishing effective and efficient early warning systems that DOST Pagasa does, and protecting our ecosystems, which the BNB under the DNR does. We find hope in the international frameworks adopted by your community of nations in 2015, particularly the Sustainable Development Goals, or the SDGs, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, this year concurred in by the Senate, and the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. All of these would save our planet and all species from destruction and death, depending on the level of action that we take today. These three agreements, which incidentally are enshrined in the General Appropriations Act of 2016 and 17, are interlocking. And the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity has a key role in helping the region make good use of these agreements, especially on how it can be adopted by each ASEAN member state based on the biodiversity profile. The Philippines is indeed very fortunate to be the home of this ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. And I look forward to more partnerships with you. The Senate has already passed on third reading the Expanded National Integrated Protected Areas Act, or the E-NIPAS, -E unfortunately without Palawan. And I hope that I could craft a separate measure together with the DNR for Palawan, because somehow the lower house had intended or wished that it be excised from the INIPAS, which I actually don't agree with, but so as not to hostage the other protected areas which is needed by legislation, we will craft another measure to include Palawan. This would strengthen protection and conservation measures of almost a hundred protected areas all over the country. And we hope the measure will be passed by the lower house this year. I also enjoin other ASEAN member states to craft policies that would strengthen the management and protection of your country's natural resources, especially in critical areas, including watersheds. The President was so clear in his State of the Nation address. We must have no extractive industries, especially mining, in watershed. Nakita ko si Pangulo, galit na galit nung sinabi yun, at hindi po dapat talaga magkaroon ng anuman pagmimina at anumang extractive industries in watersheds and protected areas. In marine sanctuaries as well, in wetlands, in tropical forests, in coastal areas, among others. In closing, I wish to stress that if we truly want the ASEAN economic community to be successful, we must learn to coexist with the environment. The earth that we live in provides us with our needs. And even if we have all the money in the world, we will not survive in a deteriorating environment. We will meet more challenges along the way, but I encourage all of you never to get tired of doing what is good for our planet. As different nations living in one planet, we need to unite towards the preservation of our biodiversity. And I'm happy to note that no less than Minister Nicolas Hulot, the Minister of Ecology and Sustainable Development of France, has committed that his country in the EU will be the climate champion, especially with the withdrawal of the US from the Paris Agreement, which I hope can still be changed. And he asked the Philippines to be their partner as a vulnerable nation in Asia, to protect our biodiversity and to be the climate champion in Asia, perhaps in Asia Pacific, to help make our planet more safe and more resilient for all of us. Thank you very much and congratulations to the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. And on the last note, if there's anything I can do to help for your activities and programs, even capital outlay, both for the DNR and the DFA and the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, just let me know at the proper time. Thank you very much and good afternoon to all of you.